In this video, we're going to be creating a banner for ads and social media focused on the sustainable fashion niche. So as you can see here on my screen, we have some basic outline of the styles and resources that we're going to use. You can see that we have a photo again from unsplash.com and from this author. So we'll definitely go check them out if you're interested. And then you can also see that we have some colors um, it's kind of uh, th this brown beige motif. Um, we also have the Meriwether font, uh, which is a free Google font available for uh, for everybody. So should be no issue getting that. I think it it could actually come uh, with with Figma in the font selection panel. And then we have the Meriwether Sans, which is the no serif equivalent of Meriwether. And of course, a placeholder logo to use on our on our banner. Um, it's going to be very simple, but the result I think still is going to look great. So let's just dive right in and let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is use the F on my keyboard, the frame tool to create a frame that's of course 1200 by 628 as with previous uh, banners that we have created. So 1200 by 628. I'm going to rename this to sustainable fashion banner and then i'm going to create another rectangle or just the first rectangle actually by using r on my keyboard and clicking and dragging and i want to do a rectangle that's going to be in the middle of this frame uh, that's going to be 1150 right 1150 by 578 okay so 1150 by 578 i'm then going to center this um, rectangle by pressing option H and option V, uh, which is then going to center this rectangle inside of this frame. Then I'm going to set the rounding of these corners of this rectangle to 60 and I'm going to sample the color from our style guide. And just to give you the code, it's EBE6DF. I'm just going to copy that, paste that on here and right that's exactly what we need uh, the next thing i'm going to do is just take this rectangle i'm sorry this image and duplicate that right so we can command c or v or you can alt or option drag to create a copy of this uh, which i'm then going to place inside of my frame i'm then going to make sure that dimensions of this image are 393 by 373 right so it's slightly smaller but thanks to the fill settings of the image, uh, uh, the image is going to adjust based on whatever we, um, we provide. And it's not going to get deformed because the aspect ratio is going to be locked. So with this now uh, in the size that we need, I'm going to make sure it aligns to the top right with this rectangle. So I'm going to do that. And then with the corners, I'm going to make sure that the top right corner is 60 because I want to, you know, make th this um, rounding match on both of these elements, the rectangle as well as the image. The next step is going to be creating a rectangle that's going to be 575 by 289. Okay, and I am going to align this rectangle to the bottom right with this background rectangle. And again, similarly to what we did with this image, I'm going to round this corner only uh, by using the corner radius and with independent corners, I'm going to type in to the uh, bottom right, I'm going to type in 60, right? So as you can see, both of these are now rounded, both of these corners on both of these elements to match whatever's in the background. I am then going to sample the color from here, which is going to be 9B7, B60. And I'm going to paste that in here and I am going to reduce the opacity of this to about 10, right? Um, now, the next thing I'm going to do is add another fill and this fill is going to be sampled from the darker brown color. That's 6B5542 and this is going to be a radial gradient um, that's going to be originating from the bottom left corner and this one is going to be set to i think 50 right so you can see that we get 
this smooth brown rectangle. And then I'm going to again select this rectangle, go to effects and add an effect. And this effect is gonna be background blur. And the, uh, the amount of background blur is gonna be 84. So quite significant. It's gonna completely blur whatever's behind that. And uh, the next thing we need to do is create another rectangle. And now it's important to position this one properly, which is gonna be again aligned to the bottom corner, uh, bottom side of this rectangle. And then I'm gonna make sure that the left side of the image and the right side of this rectangle are gonna be precisely, you know, touching precisely. There's gonna be no gap. And then finally, I'm gonna extend that all the way over here and what I'm gonna do is type in F into the color that's gonna render a white color and then I'm going to again use radial gradient for this and uh, this radial gradient is going to be originating from the top right and it's gonna be positioned somewhere around here also the opacity of this gradient is gonna be 40 okay so this is now what we get and we can move on to other elements. Now, why don't we actually use this font, this Meriwether font to create the headline, right? So I'm going to duplicate this, uh, place that onto my layout and just type in sustainable uh, fashion. Okay. And this is going to be positioned 111 points from the left and then 144 points from the top, right? The reason for this precise position is that when we now make a line like this and we move that line over here, you can see that this line is going to be precisely aligned with the top side of this rectangle and the position of the line with this text element, which is then going to be, again, I'm gonna sample the color from here. So the lighter brown, I'm gonna also align this to the left and then I'm gonna add some transparency to that color. I think like 30, 40 or 50 actually. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually press enter and extend this all the way to the right edge of this rectangle, right? You can see that it is one pixel off, so why don't I move this one pixel to the top and then probably this as well, right? So, yep, looks good. And we can move on to other elements. I'm gonna place the logo over here. And since this is just a placeholder, right? Since this is just a placeholder, I'm just gonna um, copy that, um, you know, when you use this template, uh, you will of course use your own logos. So that's totally up to you what's gonna be placed here. And yeah, let's make this 95 and let's position that somewhere around here. Okay, yep, yeah, that sounds good. I'm gonna use the Mayweather Sands. I'm gonna use 29 uh, on the font size and I'm gonna make this bold, okay? Um, and I'm going to type in shop now. So what I'm doing right now, I'm going to create the button. Okay. Alongside with this text, I'm going to also create an arrow. I'm going to press shift L and then click once. Uh, and the color, by the way, is going to be this dark brown, which is 2A2823. Or is it even dark brown, actually? Yeah, uh, I guess so. So 2A2823, that's the color we'll, we'll be using for both this and the arrow. Okay, so let me do that. And then I'm going to just shrink the arrow, make it more narrow, make the arrow narrow, right? Beautiful. This is going to be three points. And I'm going to add this to an auto layout for easier management. So select both of these, shift A, and then do like 16. Actually, let me just center this auto layout by using this control over here and then rename that to call to action. Okay, and call to action, and then change the size. And you can see that it stays in the center thanks to this settings and then uh, white, it's going to be white, simple white color. Awesome. I'm going to then position that into onto my layout. And I'm going to make sure it's 64 points from the bottom edge of this rectangle both from the bottom and the right edge of this rectangle. So let me just adjust these values. Beautiful, 64, 64. Additionally, I'm gonna make sure this 
line over here aligns precisely with the left edge of the button. Awesome, that's nice and clean. And then also adjusting the height of this to about 90, I guess. I think that could work. Um, I will also add a shadow to this button. So let me go to effects, drop shadow, and just increase the value all the way to like 30 with a significant blur. And I'm gonna sample, of course, the color of the shadow from here, right? So this dark brown, that's beautiful. That is way too prominent, so definitely let me reduce the opacity to about, I don't know, 20, 30? I think 20 looks nice. It makes it float, yet uh, it's not too aggressive. Now, all that's left is just some subheadline and one simple selling point. So let me do that. Let me copy the Meriwether Sands and I'm gonna go for 24, okay? And it's gonna be like regular, I think, regular with uh, some letter spacing. And then I'm just gonna type in a bit more extra information about this brand and its mission. It's gonna be like two rows. And we could position that somewhere around here. And I think we could even make the text a bit, you know, briefer. So let me just remove some of that. Yeah, this looks good. I think this is nice. And yeah, somewhere around here. And then for um, sustainable fashion or for certain, you know, th there's usually some type of a standard that these um, brands have to observe. So let's just uh, again duplicate this, slightly decrease the size and um, let's just say that this brand is also going to present that they are actually upholding this standard of, um, or better yet, we're just gonna create a placeholder for that. So um, let's just say that it fulfills, let's say certified sustainability, right? Let's say there's some kind of a certificate that I'm not aware of. So let's just say that's gonna be, be you know, the standard uh, for this company. And then also let's create a check mark. So circle, sample the color from here. So it's gonna be brown and also pen tool and create a check like this. Awesome, it's gonna be white, fully opaque, two or three, slightly smaller, I would say. So something like that. Let's go for eight by five and two. I'm gonna align these and group these as well and then select these two and shift a this is going to create an auto layout that i'm going to center and make sure it the spacing is about 12 right so this could say for example carbon neutral or like fair trade you know this type of thing and there could be even multiple of these uh, but in this template we're just going to go for one so sustainability is certified sustainability very generic okay very generic i'm going to align that to the left and i'm going to then make sure it's also like 86 from the bottom or you know whatever feels right we could even even maybe align this to the bottom of this button just to you know i guess uh, get a um, some kind of a rule for this layout all right so that's a very simple banner for uh, this the sustainability niche i like uh, how it's simple it's kind of minimalist it has very pleasant colors you know it's it's a very calming layout and i i do enjoy that so definitely if you'd like to use this in your own projects well if you worked alongside me during this video then you have built it yourself but in case you want to save time or support the channel you can of course as usual download the source file from my store where you can find not only this template but also all kinds of useful templates to save your uh, to save time on your figma workflows so that's it for today i hope you enjoyed this video if you did i would appreciate you leaving a like and i will see you in the next one